Hello and welcome back and today we are going to be doing some testing of the brand new TVS H1288X. That's right, we are bench testing this and this time we're using a Mac. Something I don't generally use on the channel so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit today along the way. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. We are using the 1288 slightly off camera there, you can slightly see it at the bottom. And that 1288 is populated with a mixture of media from hard drives to SSD to M2 NVMe SSD. But... When we are doing the performance testing on the Mac today, if we do use some of the capture recording software, it will affect the read-write results. So although we are going to show you a few of the setup details and the drives that we're going to be utilizing, it's worth highlighting that when it comes to the actual bench test, it's going to be here on camera with the Mac in front of you guys here. So you know it's legit, but at the same time, it's the only way I can show you and give you some true results. So... What we're going to do is make our way over to the screen now, and from there, we're then going to show you a little bit about the setup before we run this through AJA and Black Magic. Let's head to the screen now. Right, so here we are on the desktop. We've already scanned the local environment, and as you can see, we have got that Mac showing here with the Thunderbolt connection. I'm just going to move the mic ever so slightly closer, and there we are. Now, before we run any of the tests, let's have a look at the media we're going to be utilizing today. Let's sign into the device. Also, maybe move that mic ever so slightly away uh, from the keyboard there. Head on in, and we've got the device here. We've done a fresh setup for this video, so we know we're not going to worry about the latest firmware update there. That's came out, I think, the last day or so. We're going to go straight into the storage and snapshots. Now, remember, this is a ZFS equipped device here so there's a lot of the benefits of removing the volume tier and we're taking advantage of a few little bits and bobs in the background so if we go to the discs there or moreover we go into the um, storage and snapshots area you can see that storage pool one two three and four four pools on the go and if we go into the discs you're able to see all of these different groups together we've got um, four nvmes on a dedicated qm2 card here all in one raid array here at the bottom, that's a RAID 0. Then we have got all of the traditional hard drives here, eight of them, all of them in a single RAID array there. We then got two more SSDs, uh, SATA SSDs, 4TB or 3.62TB afterwards, in a lovely little RAID environment there. And finally, we've got a couple of internal NVMe M2 SSDs. Now, it's worth highlighting, some of you may have already noticed that I've said M2 NVMe's more than once there, and that's because we are using that QM2 card. And it's one of the many cards available from QNAP that allow you to expand the storage, the caching, and more. Now, I am utilizing a couple of SATA SSDs here for caching in the background. And I think that is acceptable in this layer of test because this is a triple tier system. And a number of you are more than likely going to use one of these tiers for caching. So, we've decided to include caching in our series of tests today. Um, with this, we are also using SMB mapped drive here. So if we head into the um, QFinder Pro, and we go there, we're going to leave the QNAP page there, come out of it. There we go, leave page, and we go into it there. We're able to see if we go into the network drives, log into the device again, have a look. We can see we've already like, gone into the drive already, and it will show us these different drives. Now, Although we've got all the different media types, today we're going to be focusing on those NVMEs because we are looking at the tippity top and the best we can do right now uh, with this system. We've already uh, created that public folder there. And if we make our way into Black Magic, uh, not Black Magic, AJA, let's start with that one. We can go into it here, open up AJA, find the drive that we've mounted. There we are. We'll go for that drive there in Homes, click Open. And let's start with a 1080p test file moving forward. And what I'm going to do is first show you this test on screen with the screen recording enabled. Just to show you um, the reason why we're going to have to record off camera for these tests. So we're going to move that there. So double click there in the background. Let's move you up. We've got the benchmarks there in the background as well. And we're going to make sure we don't have disk caching or any of the other stuff enabled in the background. All disabled. It's a continuous test. So for now, let's show you this test with screen recording enabled just to show you why we need to record off screen. A one gig test file. Let's fire away. So straight away, as you can see, because we're using capture recording software, it has severely limited the read write largely because of the GPU consumption of the capture recording software, but also because of the activity on that core drive internally. So we're going to stop that there. 
and we're now going to switch back as we can see here on screen i'm going to move the mic back into here we're going to rotate this device so you can take a good look at this performance threshold here so you can see it there at the bottom of the screen and now we're going to disable the recording software it's now been disabled we can make our way back into AJA for the testing and we can repeat that test. Let's go with it and start the test. So straight away, we're hitting those higher numbers. We'll let that go there. And we're getting that read write ramping up as well. I think the system was just closing that captured recording. So as you see, we are hitting those 1,000. We're hitting the 11,000s there. We're getting some lovely numbers off of those four NVMe SSDs in the storage pool inside. Now, bear in mind, we are using IP over Thunderbolt or Thunderbolt over IP. So the speeds that we are going to see are not going to be that of a DAS. You have to remember, this is about the protocol of Thunderbolt in this way for a multi-user environment. This isn't to be comparable against a DAS. You have to bear that in mind when you go with it. But let's make a switch now over to one of the other storage pools to show the difference in performance between them. Actually, before we switch to a different storage pool, it's worth looking at 5K media as well. We're doing a 5K resolution test, and this is a 64 gig test file going ahead straight away. So let's run that test. And again, this is gonna be a slower test, so we're only gonna do the one rotation on this, but we're still maintaining in excess of a thousand megs. We're approximately a quarter of a way into that test. And right now, we're seeing some pretty good numbers. I'm not gonna move the Mac as well, because it will loosen that Thunderbolt cable, and that will completely kibosh this test for a number of us and waste your time and mine. But the right now in this you know heavy duty test, is now resting its laurels at 1130, but actually, no, it's still going. And the write speed there is pretty consistent. Now, as we let this thing play itself out, and I'll rotate that more to camera for you, soon we'll be switching into the read there. So hopefully the read will give us some bigger numbers overall. Now, there are lots of ways in which you can take advantage of a system like this. You can go ahead with multiple tiers, each one working in an intelligent tiering system, such as with Q-Tier, or each one can act as their own storage pool, each with their own priorities, and with the added benefit that even without the Thunderbolt card, it still provides somewhere around um, 3,000 megabytes spread through against different devices with two 10 GBE ports and four 2.5 GBE ports. So there's a lot of fluidity and flexibility about how you can interact with this device. And remember, different storage pools for different users, they will all get their own inherent benefits. And even a shared storage pool, they will still get some great numbers. Maybe not the same as a single connected user, but definitely up there. So let's switch back over. And the read is ever so slightly less than I would have liked um, on it. But I do think a lot of that can come down to our test. Right now, we've got a lot of activity between us and this system happening right now as we create these large benchmark tests. Um, once this test is completed, we're going to switch back to the screen recording software. And then we're going to be setting up a few other um, shared drives and we'll be running tests on those storage pools on those other media storage pools but we'll let that finish out there it hasn't quite cracked into the thousand on that test but the write speed is still pretty impressive throughout but for now let's get this device set up and some other shared drives we'll get that set up and we'll run some tests on those right so we've created a bunch of shared folders i'm just going to go into it now and show you exactly what we're dealing with on these uh, we've already mapped them as well to the Mac system already, but if we go into uh, File Station, you'll see that I've created different storage pools there on the left of the screen. And each of those storage pools, there's the hard drive RAID 5, there's the NVMe RAID pool, the second one, so it's the two NVMe's, and we've even got a couple of SATA SSDs in a RAID pool there. We've already mapped them with QFinder. Um, that we've disabled their recycle bins as well, just in case that was going to affect any of our results. Shouldn't really. And of course, even though we are using the screen recording software right now, we are going to come out of that in just a moment. So let's get AJA up on screen. And what we're going to do is make our way back to the screen so you can see me. Hello there. I'm going to talk to you on screen. So we're going to disable our screen recording because that's the first thing we want to do to make sure that doesn't affect our results. And we're going to make our way into that Mac. So the first thing we're going to do is that hard drive storage array. We're going to do a 1080p test first, nice and quick, 1080p. Let's go for it there, scroll to the top. And apparently um, I don't know how to use a mouse mat. Let's have a look there. There we go, and we're gonna go for a standard 
four gig test file I think there and as you can see we're using the hard drive RAID pool and we're going to go ahead and get those performance benchmarks. Now bear in mind this is 8 WD Red Pros 10 TB to a man and we are seeing that slight dip there that we saw before during the rendering and we do have audio recording happening on a separate device there in the background. So if we rotate that on screen for you guys there this is the hard drive RAID, it's a RAID 5 configuration, but these are still uh, 7200 RPM drives with 256 megabyte cache. And these aren't uh, any shingled magnetic recording drives, and a number of you are almost certainly going to put that in the comments. But we're seeing some lovely performance there from those hard drives there. So let's come out of that one there. And now we're going to make our way into a slightly different array there. Let's go for a different target drive. Come out of AJA. Go into AJA again. Let it ask us which drive we want to use go back into the thunderbolt connection and now we're going to go for the sata ssd pool now even though there are four ssd bays i will add that we're only using two of them the other two bays are being utilized for caching already so this time we're not going to go for a 1080 we're going to go slightly unconventional we're going to move into a 4k red hd file and again four gig we're going to ramp that up perhaps to a 16 gig file and again the ssd raid pool we're going to go ahead and kick that off and we've hit the, um, uh, the 1,000 megs per second immediately, and we're living in that 1,000 megs pretty exclusively throughout this. Um, we're going to let that write go through, and bear in mind this is a 4K 16 gig test file. Now, originally, I was going to do some performance testing with Black Magic, but it became very, very clear to me that there's absolutely no way you can see those numbers clearly there on screen. At least these, you have a better understanding and visibility of what we're recording in today's video. But as we go into another rotation, we can see that we're getting in excess of 1,000, close to 1,200 there on read, and the write is still in excess of 1,000 with those SSDs in utilization. So, we're going to the final test here. And this is going to be the NVMe pool. So let's come out of AJA again. Let's go for it there. Go for it there. And again, I hope the sound's still okay with the mic being repositioned where it is. I've not had an opportunity to test how smooth that's going to be coming over for you guys there. Now bear in mind, this is a two NVMe pool. And this isn't going to be utilizing the, uh, the QM2 card that's inside where it was utilizing four. Uh, SSDs inside down. We're going to go for the biggest one here. We're going for a 5K red, and it's a 5K red 64 gig test file. Expect that dip in right that we've seen before. But let's go ahead and click there. And we're seeing those performance speeds very early doors hit the 1000 megs. Let's bring that nice and close. Every time I move the laptop, I'm fairly certain touching that Thunderbolt cable is probably doing it an absolute disservice. But as we see those numbers on screen, I can sort of make them out from this angle. We are still living in the four digits there. And remember, this is a four, oh, sorry, a 5K test file. So it's pretty beefy there in the background. We're going to let that write performance finish before we get, let it switch over to the read. And we'll probably wrap things up there. Now, other things about this device that we have talked about previously, we've obviously done our Plex testing. It is still to date the highest performing desktop Plex media server that we have like reviewed here on the channel and on the blog and again it does arrive at a price tag let's be realistic two to two and a half grand and that is uh different variations of the configurations of the memory but it's always going to be that six core processor the xeon w1250 um but right now this is very much the score to beat it's got the zfs on board it's got dual 10 gbe optional thunderbolt we've talked about at length it's very much the go-to device currently and at the moment, if it had been released as little as a month sooner, it probably would have made its way into our best of the year articles. But unfortunately, rules is rules. Maybe next year we'll see what happens. Now, on top of this, we have got some virtualization content coming very, very soon. We've already recorded that one that we're going to be going into. And that's a lot about how quick it is to um, download and deploy a VM on this system with virtualization stations. So do check that out. But this has been our Thunderbolt Max performance. Uh, uh, Mac performance testing uh, using AJA on a brand new TVS H1288X. Click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, and of course visit the guys at span.com if you do need help with your data storage solution. Nearly 30 years in the biz, they know what they're doing. I know it's a plug, but it doesn't mean it's not true. I will see you next time.